Be in God's presence this night. Amen. It's always a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. David said, I'm glad when I'm told, let us go to the house of God. Because nobody comes to the presence of God and go back the same way. And I believe that as we have all come here today, we will never go back empty in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to appreciate God for the privilege he has given to every one of us to come together in his presence. May his name forever be praised in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to appreciate the leadership of the church, particularly uh, the shepherd of this church, uh, Reverend Dr. Samson Adidokun, for the privilege he given and extended to me to be part of the worship this evening. I want to appreciate uh, Reverend Amadiko. And all the deacons of the church, you want to appreciate God for what the wonderful work that God is using every one of you to do here. I pray that God will continue to bless everyone and to bless his church in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that all your labor in the vineyard of God will never be in vain. Uh, by God's grace, Reverend uh, Dr. Adedoku has always been my my leader right from the seminary days and even up to today is still my leader to so want to thank God for uh, the grace of God upon his life. He's a man I admire so much because he carries unusual grace. Unusual grace. He's a man of unusual grace and I pray that that grace will continue to multiply upon his life in the name of Jesus Christ. So we bow our heads as we pray together. Father, we want to thank you for the privilege of coming together in your presence. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to worship and to present our request before you. We pray, Lord, that everyone who is under this ministration, Father, I ask that in your name you will visit them. Visit them with your power. Visit them with your anointing. Visit them with your grace in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that, Lord, at the end of today, Lord, let there be great testimony. Testimonies of your miracle in the life of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. By the grace of God, we are considering uh, uh, two passages quickly that we are going to read. The first passage is taken uh, from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, we read from verse 7 to 11, then uh, John chapter 16, amen, John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24, first we read from Matthew chapter 7, 7 to 11, then John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. There among you, who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Matthew 7, 7 to 11. Okay. John 16, 23, 24. John... But take heart, I have come, I have overcome the world. John 16, 23 to 24. Okay. In that day, 23 to 24. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. All right. Yeah. Very truly, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And in verse 24, it says, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Amen. Amen. When the Lord called me into the ministry, 
One of the things the Lord expressly told me was that I have not called you into this work to preach the gospel of salvation alone, but I have also called you to go and tell my people and make them to understand who they are in me. The Lord said to me, a lot of my children have not really discovered the privilege, the opportunity, the grace, the, the, uh, and every other thing that they have the privilege to enjoy in me. So go and open their eyes that apart from their salvation, there are other, other plenty things, a lot of things that they see have the opportunity to enjoy. And so by the grace of God, one of the things we are to do this evening is what God himself has opened our eyes to, to say, it is your right, it is your privilege, it is what is your package as a child of God. Amen. And that is exactly what we are going to do tonight. Say, a lot of my people are not enjoying the best of my blessings in their life because they are ignorant of who they are and the privilege and the opportunity they have in me. And one of the privilege and one of the rights that God has given to us through Jesus Christ as God's children is the right to ask. Amen. Right to do what? To ask. God has that prerogative to tell us, don't ask me anything. I don't want to hear you. I don't want you to call upon me. I'm not ready to listen to you. But he has given us that right and that privilege to say, call upon me. Ask from me. And he didn't really say, when you ask, I'm not going to do anything. He also said, when you ask, I'm going to respond. Amen. And so, by the grace of God, for the past three days, today is the grand finale, we have been looking at the acronym ASK. Amen. Ask A S K. And A stands for what? Ask. The second one, S, stands for what? Seek. And the last one, K, for what? For knock. These are three dimensions or levels of prayers that we can engage ourselves in while making requests before God. Asking, seeking, and knocking are all dimensions we can engage, dimensions our requests can go when we are asking anything from the Lord. And Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 7, in verse 7 to 11, told his audience, Ask, and you shall be what? You shall receive. Seek, and you will do what? You will find. And knock, the door shall be open. And I pray tonight that as we ask, and as we seek, and as we knock, there will be response. I say there will be response. In the name of Jesus Christ. He went further to say, for everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. And everyone that knocks, the door opens unto him. And thank you for our sister who led in the praises. He say, I know I'm serving a God of miracle. And as we ask tonight, and as we seek tonight, as we knock tonight, miracle will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was telling 
his disciples in John chapter 16 towards the end of his ministry. He looked at them and accused them of something. Amen. And it's, um, it's like somebody who is disappointed in them, or who is not happy about their attitude. This man had been going from villages to villages, healing the sick, raising the dead, performing one miracle or the other, providing for the needy of the people, and a lot of things. But Jesus looked at them, and he said, either to up to now, with all these privileges, with all these opportunities that you have, up to now, you have not done what? You have not what, done what? You have not asked for anything. Do you know that many times we behave like that as children of God? We don't take advantage of the privilege that we have in Christ. We don't take the advantage of the right we have. Jesus was not happy. That he will be leaving them without them asking for anything. He said, no, up to now, with all these privileges, you have not asked anything. He now went further to say, now I give you the opportunity. Ask that your joy may be what? May be full. God is interested in our joy. God is interested in our what? In our joy. He's a heavenly father. He loves us. Just like any earthly father will be happy seeing good things happening to his children. The same way God reacts when he sees us happy. I pray that tonight you will be happy. You will go back home tonight a happy man in the name of Jesus Christ. So quickly let us just look at these three levels. The first level is what? The level of what? Of asking. And of course this is the simplest form of request. That any believer can engage you or herself in while requesting from God for anything. You know, as believers, you have the privilege, you have the opportunity to ask. And when you go through the scripture, you see through the faces of the word of God, where the Bible uh, tells us to ask, to request from him. Because he has all what it takes to take, to respond to our request. And of course, he has shown us that there is going to be a response, a positive response from him. He said, for everyone that acts, receives. Abraham requested for a child. He got it. Amen. Isaac pleaded before God. There was an answer. Amen. And many people in the Bible, you see, calling upon the name of the Lord, asking for healing, asking for deliverance, asking for, for God's help in one way or the other. And all of them, God did what? God responded. You know, one thing about God is that he just wants you to be happy. Amen. There are times... That what will make you happy may not be something that is so much that very important. It's just like uh, I, I, I have a little, uh, a little baby who is just about uh, four years. Sometimes you come to me, Daddy, I need balloon. I need balloon. Give me balloon. I want balloon. To me, what is balloon? Just a piece of rubber with air blown inside. Abi? Nothing. But I noticed... Anytime I blew the balloon and gave it to you see happiness. I looked at her and I feel, oh, she's happy. Do you know that that is how God behaves to us? Even though some of the things we are asking may not be that very important to him, but because he's also interested in what we make us to be fulfilled. He also say, Ask, I will do it because I want you to be happy. The Lord will make somebody happy tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. As we go further, let me quickly share with us. A lady came to me in the church some years back. She has gotten four, uh, three children, all boys. 
So at a point, she came to me after service and said, Pastor, I want to see you. I said, okay, here am I, what is it? He said, well, um, we are ready to have another baby. And I want you to pray for me that this one, because we plan to have four. We have gotten three, all boys, but this one we are planning now. I want you to be a girl. So I asked her, but children, her children, why are you so particular about uh, having a boy or a girl, or, uh, having a girl after you have got him. He said, she said, ah, you know, when we are in the house, I see my husband playing with all these boys in the house, and I'm alone. Huh? I'm alone. I don't have a companion. Huh? Just pray that God will give me somebody so that when my husband and these boys are playing their own, myself and this one too, you know, okay, you are laughing too. Very funny. <laughs> Amen. Very funny. But do you know that? I said, okay. If that is what will make you happy. If that is what will make your joy to be full. Let's tell God about it. And let his will be done. So we prayed. And I asked God, Lord. She wants to be happy. We thank you for what you have done. But so that her joy might be full. She says she needed a girl. To this one that they are preparing for. Lord, according to your will for them. Do you know what? She gave back to a baby girl. Hallelujah. God will make somebody happy tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. By simple asking, that request was granted. At another time, a pregnant woman, woman came to me and said, Pastor, my day of delivery is approaching. I've gotten three children, but at delivery, it has always been very, very difficult for me. I labor for two, three days before I give birth. It has always been very painful. But please, I want you to pray. Because he has gotten those three children before coming, joining our church. This one I'm carrying, I want you to pray. I don't want to go through that experience. Pray that it will be different. I said, well, God is going to answer that. And do you know what happened? When the day came, the general hospital is just about five, um, 500 meters away from the house. So the moment the labor started, the husband took her into the car. And before they got to the hospital, she delivered inside the car. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to ask tonight. And there is going to be a response in the name of Jesus Christ. So don't feel that this thing is too, is too, is, is too minimal. Or is not, I don't need to ask God. No, God wants you to be happy about it. Yeah? There's not, just tell God about it. He loves us and he wants us to be happy. Amen. When I read the story of the prodigal son, especially the elder sister and the elder brother, you know, when he came back, what did he say? He was not happy seeing all the party going on. In his house. And he challenged his father. He said to him, Oh, what is all this? You are doing this to my brother who squandered all your properties. Who squandered this? Who squandered that? And I've been serving you all this year. I've been faithful to you. You have never done anything for me. You have never asked me. Well, you have never made me happy. Do you know what the father said? He said, well, my son. Everything that I have. It belongs to you. By implication. The man is saying, but you never ask. I will have given it. It is yours. But you never ask. But do you know that that is exactly because the prodigal son's elder brother is a type of believer. We complain. When you see miracle happening to others, you complain. But have you really asked? He said, if you ask, you do what? You receive. Amen. The second level is this level of what? Of seeking. Of course, this is a little, you go a little beyond just asking. It takes a form of what? Of tarrying, of being consistent in your asking. You go beyond just asking, but you go you, with a little uh, pressure, with a little uh, intensity. Uh, you go higher to ask from God. Amen. It takes a time 
in that direction. That is the level at which sometimes we need to pray. Amen. In John chapter in, uh, in Luke chapter 18, Jesus said, For this reason, men always ought to pray and not what? To faint. And he gave a parable of a woman who kept going back to the judge. Avenge me of my enemy. Do something about my case. At the initial stage, the man wouldn't listen. But after some time, the man changed his mind. So Jesus is saying there are times when we need to be importunate in our request. You go beyond just asking and keep quiet. You keep on telling God about what you need until you do uh, some people have pull, given apro- acronym to push. They say, pray until something happens. That is the second level. Whereby you keep on telling God, I needed these things and I believe you will do it for me. Amen. That is the level at which Daniel pray in, John, in Daniel chapter 10 in verse, in, verse, um, in verse 14. The Bible tells us that he was so willing to see something happening. To this condition of the people of Israel in captivity. He has read and he has discovered that this is the purpose of God for these people. But yet, where they are betrays the plans of God for them. And so he started to pray to God and say, God, I want to see what will become of your people. What are you, when are you going to restore them? When is your promise going to be fulfilled? He wanted an answer. And the Bible tells us that he didn't get that answer the first day. The answer came after how many days? After 21 days. But he was not tired. Possibly some of the things you are going to pray about today, you have been praying about them. But God still wants you to pray about them tonight. Are you going to do that? Are you going to do that? Are you going to do that? Do you believe God will answer you? In the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel prayed and prayed and prayed until something happened. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, in verse 1 to 4. There, Jesus, before then, Jesus promised them, the disciples, he said, well, you don't need to venture into the assignment I have given to you until you are endued with power from heaven. Therefore, tarry at Jerusalem until that promise comes. And they were there. You know, it took them several days before that promise was fulfilled. They keep on praying to God, Lord, this is what you promised. We needed that power. We needed that empowerment. We needed that endowment from heaven. This something. The Bible says, and when the day of the Pentecost fully came, the answer came. Amen. The answer came. God is not a denier. He's always faithful to his children. He never, he never denies his children what he has promised. When he says a thing, he brings it to pass in their lives. Amen. So, you are going to pray in that dimension tonight. Don't say to yourself, well, I've been praying all this year. Nothing is happening. You still need to pray tonight. And I know that God is going to do something very soon in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the year 2002, then I was at the Nigeria Baptist Theological Seminary. And I, we heard that evangelist Riyad Banke will be coming to Bumosho for the great crusade, the great revival. Well, being in Bumosho, so I went, the day started. And when I saw people, when I saw miracle, when I saw the power of God moved, I remember the, for that very first day on the open field, I knelt down, I bowed my head to the ground, and I said to God, Lord, I didn't want you for, I didn't re- I'm not here to request for anything other than I want this man. This man called a bunky that is preaching. This man that you are using right now, I want him in my hometown. That's my prayer request. I didn't ask for anything, but that. So for those number of days, 
that Ray Abonke is spending no motion. Every day I go to that field, I say, God, this is my request. So how he will come? I don't know. Who will tell him about my village? I don't know. How the miracle will happen? I don't know. I hear from Shaki in Oyo State. Very remote area in the Oyo North part. So I, I just felt, who will carry my petition to this man? I don't know. But that was my request. So after the crusade, from time to time, when I'm praying, I say, tell God, Lord, remember what I asked. I want this man in my hometown. Do you know what? After one year, I got a letter from my father. I said, Emmanuel, I'm, one, I'm happy to tell you that in a few weeks' time, we'll be paying a host to that great evangelist, Rihard Bonke. Oh, my goodness. I knelt down. I said, wow. How come? Possibly, maybe people like, it might not be only me praying, but what I know is that that was my request. That was what I asked God for. But after one year, it was granted. So I told my, I wrote back to my father, I said, for this, do you know I've been praying heavily for this? I will matter, even if they fix the exam in the seminar, I will skip it. I will go back to him. And I did that. It was wonderful. Reason is that Shaki is a Muslim dominated town. And I know when they see the power of God, things will change. Do you know that was what liberated my town? The people that got the miracle were more of even of Muslims than Christians. And since that time, religious crisis, fighting died down. Amen. God is going to answer somebody tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. But you need to, don't be tired. Don't say, well, I bet I've been praying over this. Nothing is happening. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, the third level, the level of what? The level of knocking. Amen. This level, this is another level of prayer. But this one is quite different from asking. You know, you can ask and uh, you go and relax. You say, well, I've told him. I know he will do something. You can see, you can say, well, God, at your own appointed time, I know you will do what? You will do something. But the level of knocking is not like that. The level of knocking is a level of urgent, urgency. Whereby you need God to do what? To act. Otherwise, it may, the result may not be all that okay. And that is it's like there's an emergency and you run to uh, your neighbors for help and you do what? And you begin to, to do what? To knock. Bah, 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 bah. Please, come out. Do something. Help me. That is the level. And sometimes there could be a situation that we require that we go from the level of asking, from the level of seeking to the level of what? Of knocking. Because we needed God to respond. Amen. And God will not be like uh, any man who will say, why are you disturbing? He's waiting for that knock. Amen. And I know somebody is going to knock tonight. Somebody is going to knock tonight. The lady had been married for several years. We have been praying. We have been asking God, trusting God. But this very particular Tuesday, she came to me and said, Pastor, what do you about you? I heard that they are already arranging another woman for my husband in the village. And the only thing, my best friend in the village have called me that the only thing that can stop this is if I become pregnant. That is the only thing. Pastor, ah, you have to pray. You have to pray. I looked. Very fine woman. Committed. I said, God. At that point, I have to tell God. Otiwa do you baba? We are something must happen. After two months, this woman became pregnant. And that put a stop to that shame. That put a stop to that problem. Amen. You are going to knock tonight. An answer will come in the name of Jesus Christ. God expects us to knock. And when we knock, what did he say? He said, there will be an answer. In, that, in the book of Daniel chapter 2, the Bible tells us 
that there was an exit that was passed. That all the wise men in Babylon should be killed. Why? Because the king had a dream and nobody could tell the dream to the king. Neither was anyone able to interpret it. And the king got infuriated. I said, well, since you cannot tell me what I dreamt, I don't believe you can give me the interpretation even, I, even if I tell you. And every one of them, the wise men, the astrologers, they became stranded. And the king commanded and said, well, these ones are fake. My commander, do what? Go and kill all of them. Kill all of them. In the next 24 hours, kill all of them. I don't want to see them. The Bible says those who are already conspiring to eliminate Daniel, what did they do? They now took advantage to do what? To rope Daniel among them. The Bible says, and they were also seeking to kill Daniel and his companion, Sidrach, Misak, and Abednego. And so when the news got to Daniel, Daniel, why is he like this? Don't they, they, it was explained to him. Daniel said, give me just till tomorrow. And he went home and called his brother and said, look, there is fire on the mountain. Something must be done between now and tomorrow. Otherwise, we are dead men. The Bible says they went into action to pray, to see God, God, Something must be done. Something must. That is not the level of asking. That is not the level of seeking. That is the level of what? Knocking. Something must be done. Glory be to God. The Bible says in the night, what happened? The secret was revealed to Daniel. And that was how Daniel was saved. And he also, he said, I'm not asking you to save me alone. Even all these astrologers, you don't need to kill anybody. Answer came because somebody knocked. You are going to knock tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to quickly read this passage before we pray. Mark chapter 10. If you are there, you can just quickly read. Mark chapter 10 verse 46 to 49. Mark 10, 46 to 49. Anyone? You can quickly read. Yes. Yes. A blind man, Bartimaeus. Yes. Was sitting by the road. Was sitting by the side of the road, begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of. When he heard that it was who? Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth passing by. <laughs> Amen. He, he began to shout. He began to do what? To shout. Jesus. Jesus. Son of David. Son of David. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Does that one look like a gentleman's prayer? Or cry? No. He was shouting. Possibly this man must have heard about Jesus Christ. You will see. Read. This man must have heard about the power that this man carries. Possibly some people might have told him, oh, had they been you have an encounter with this man called Jesus. Oh, he will have healed you. Possibly this man must have been praying secretly. Oh, how I wish I have opportunity to this man. And now the opportunity came. Very sensitive man. He couldn't see, but yet he could understand what was going on around him. He said, well, it has never happened like this. I have never had this kind of noise before. What is happening? Can somebody tell me something? And they say, oh, it is that man. That man that we used to talk about. That man that we, we, we have been talking about. Jesus. That man that heals. That man that delivers. That man that raised dead, uh, dead back to life. Is the one passing. Oh, immediately this man heard that. What did he say? Oh, Jesus. Thou son of David. Do what? Have mercy, mercy on, me. on me. Read the next passage. Many rebuked him. Many now do what? Rebuked him. Uh huh. I told him to be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. But, but he shouted. But he more. did what? He shouted the more. Why? 
Because he knew the opportunity may not come again. And of course, the opportunity never came. Because at that moment, Jesus was going to Jerusalem to die. If he had kept quiet at that moment, if he didn't knock at that time, if he, didn't, if he wasn't intensifying at that moment, that opportunity wouldn't have come. But he cried the more. How? Saying, Son of David. Son of David. Have mercy, have on, mercy me. on me. The next verse. And Jesus stopped. And Jesus did what? And said. And said. Call him. Call him. So they called to the blind man. Amen. Cheer up. Cheer up. On your feet. Hmm. He is calling you. That man you are calling have responded. The Lord is going to respond tonight. Amen. The Lord is going to respond tonight. Amen. He's going to respond to that situation. He's going to respond to that condition in the name of Jesus Christ. As I conclude, the, Jesus Christ says, everyone that asks, receives. Everyone that seeks, finds. And everyone that knocks, he does what? The door open unto him. These are three levels. I don't know which level you are going to operate upon tonight. But whichever level you operated upon tonight, what I can assure you of is that there is going to be what? There is going to be an answer. Amen. Don't let the devil deceive you to say, well, if nothing is going to... I have seen things. I have seen things. Miracle have happened, has happened. I have seen powers of God being demonstrated raw. I have seen situations that has become hopeless that God transformed it. And he's going to repeat it in your life tonight. He's going to repeat it in your life tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we be on our feet as we pray together? I don't know why you are here. I don't know what you want God to do for you. But what I can say is that Jesus, just as he was passing through Jericho, that time he's passing here tonight. His power is passing by. His grace is passing by. His miracle is passing by. Huh? Can you begin to ask him to do something about your life? Let's just take this song as we take it one or two times and we sing. Oh, change Oh, change Oh, change Oh, change Oh, change Oh, change Unchangeable, God. He has never changed his desire to heal, to set free, to deliver, to do for you what no man can do. Has never changed. He loves you. He's thinking about you. He wants you to think. He wants you to be happy. He said, call unto me, and I will answer, and I will show to you great and mighty things that you have never known. Oh, oh, change it, oh, change it, oh, change it, oh, change oh, change it, oh, change oh, change oh, Imute bugo, imute bugo, imute bugo, imute bugo, imute Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I want you to believe Him. I want you to trust Him. I want you to believe that He's going to answer you tonight. He's going to do for you. That situation is going to change. And a miracle will happen. Thank you, Father. Reliable, reliable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Unchangeable God. Thank you, Father. Dependable, dependable. I want you to activate your faith now. I want you to activate your faith now. I want you to activate your faith now to ask, to see, and to know. Activate your faith now. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. 
Defendable God, defendable God. Can you go ahead as you talk to God about your situation, about your condition? Can you talk to him? Can you talk to him? Can you repeat those things before him again with that intensity? Can you begin to ask? Can you begin to see? Can you begin to knock? He said, for everyone that asks, receives. And everyone that seeks, finds. Can you begin to talk to God? Can you begin to talk to God? Can you express your desire before him? This is my desire. Jesus Christ says, whatsoever you desire, whatsoever you desire, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, when you ask, whether you ask, whether you seek, when he said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, you will receive. Believe that word. Believe that word. Can you talk to him? Can you express, can you tell God, this is my desire. As a child of God, that is your right. It is your right. Healing is your right. Deliverance is your right. Sound sleep is your right. There are a lot of people who could not sleep. The Bible says, he giveth sound sleep to his beloved. If you are here and you cannot sleep well because things are troubling your mind and uh, things are not working, maybe because of health, your right. You have the right to sleep well. Can you talk to God about it? Can you talk to God about it? You sleep, you've been tormented in the dream. They are pursuing you here and there. No, that is not the purpose of God for your life. David said, I will sleep and I will sleep soundly. Because the Lord is with me. Because I belong to him. Can you talk to God? I want to sleep well. I want to sleep well. I want to sleep well. Is there any sickness anywhere? Can you talk to God? God says, I am the Lord that hears you. Do you know anyone close to you who is sick? Can you talk to God now and say, I receive healing for this one? Because it is your right. Good health is your right. Good health is the privilege we enjoy in the presence of God. Can you talk to God? And say, Father, help me. What is your desire? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. When I read the story of Lazarus and the rich man in the book of Luke, amen, in chapter 16, I challenged God. I said, why will you allow a man who loves you so much to the extent that when he died, nobody could bury him, but you still send your angels to do what? To conduct his burial. If this man have served you so much. And why will he die? A pauper. Why will he die? And the Lord said. Go and read that scripture again. And I went. And when I got. To verse 21. The Bible says. He desires. To be fed. By the crumbs. That fell. From the rich man's table. And the Lord says, do you see why I can't change his condition? That is his desire. He never asked. He never tell me, God, I want to eat better food. He never He only desire. And I can't do beyond what he desires. And I looked at it. And Jesus says, whatsoever you desire. About it. Can you express your desire now? And talk to God. And say, Father, I desire. This is my desire. I desire good health. I desire breakthrough. I desire financial upliftment. I desire marriage. I desire a good wife. I desire a good husband. Express your desire before him. Before him. I'm stopping at seven. 
Can you express your desire before him? When Bartimaeus met with Jesus, Jesus saw that he was blind. But yet, Jesus didn't take for granted and say, okay, I can see that you are blind. Because his crying was that, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. There are many ways by which mercy can be shown. It could be that Jesus talked to the crowd, let them bless me. Jesus, uh, do this, do that. So, Jesus wants him to be specific. And he asked him when he got to him, what exactly do you want me to do? In other words, what is your desire? And he said, I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. And Jesus gave him that desire. That day, blindness sees. In it. What is your desire? What are you really asking? I've told you, God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be happy. Don't look at it that way. This is no. God wants you to be happy. Huh? What are those things that wants, you want God to do for you? Are you here as parents? Some of your children are not doing well in school. Can you talk to God? They are not obeying you. They are now becoming rowdy. They are now becoming misbe they are now misbehaving. Can you talk to God about them and say, Lord, your word says I will have peace over my children, but this one are not giving me peace. Lord, do something. Can you talk to God? Can you talk to God? While I was in, when I was in Ogbomosho, a woman, an old woman of about 70 years came to me one day and said, Pastor, please, I want you to pray for me. And I asked, what is it, Mama? What is wrong? He said, me, okay, roll on soon. I don't sleep in the night. I, don't, I want to sleep, but I cannot sleep. I said, okay. You want to be sleeping well? He said, yes. So I went and I prayed with her. I said, Father, your word says you give ground. Her desire is that she wants to sleep well. And that was the beginning of sleeping well for that woman. The following woman, the following morning, the woman came and said, ha, ah, ha, ah, pastor, me, oh, my the woman slept like the way she never slept before. God is here. His power is here. Take advantage of the privilege. Take advantage of the opportunity. He wants to bless you. He wants to make you happy. Are you trusting him for good job? Amen. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well. Oh, it is well with you. Can you raise up your hands yes, and confess Lord, that one? I, I believe in your word. Yes, I believe in your miracle. I believe, I believe in your power. Well I believe in what you are going to do in my life. I believe. Yes, Lord. I believe. Yes, Lord. I believe. It is well. Oh, it is well with me. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. It is well with me. I believe that my sickness is moving out now. I believe that I'm overcoming that problem now. I believe that mountain is moving now. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. For all things are possible for those who believe. All things are possible for those who believe. I believe you, Father. Oh, I believe it is well. 
Oh, it is well with me. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me. Before I take my seat, I just want to pray for some few group of people here. If you are here tonight and you are having sickness in your body, can you just raise up your hand? Or perhaps you have somebody around you who is sick and you want that healing. I want to pray right now. 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 The Bible says he sent his word and heals them. He sent his word and he healed them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, your word says healing and good health are for your children. Lord, I pray right now, your word says the strangers shall be terrified and they will come out with trembling from their hiding places. All these hands that are raised up, either for them or for their close ones, close friends, close relatives, wherever they are, I release your power of healing. Now, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever be the nature of that sickness, Oh, the Bible says, at the mention of his name, every nail shall bow. Therefore, I ask in your name, cancer bow in the name of Jesus. Christ. High blood pressure bow in the name of Jesus. Diabetes bow in the name of Jesus. Sleeplessness bow in the name of Jesus. Typhoid and malaria bow in the name of Jesus. Every problem in the kidney, every problem in the liver, every problem in the blood, I command you, you seed of the devil, I command you, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power that is in the name of the Lord, I command you, get out in the name of Jesus. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. You are here, you have difficult children. them free set them free from every negative influence set them free from unfriendly friends set them free in the name of jesus thank you everlasting father in jesus name we have prayed i want you to pray i want to pray now for anyone all our brothers our sisters our spinsters our bachelors who are trusting god for husband and for wives wherever you are can you just raise up your hands towards heaven the lord is going to do something miracle is going to happen mighty father i pray lord your word says when you created them you created them male and female you blessed them you said be more fruitful and multiply you instituted marriage saying it is not good for a man or a woman to be alone i will make a harper they desire that lord i pray for all our sphincters for all our brothers who are looking up unto you for the bones of their bone, flesh of their flesh. I pray, Father, let there be divine connection in the name of Jesus. Christ. Father, bring before them right partners in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power that is working against that marriage, I cancel them tonight in the name of Jesus. Every my every power that is causing frustration, disappointment, engagement today, scattering tomorrow, I stop you, that spirit causing that situation. Stop your work in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty Father. I pray, Lord, for godly children, for as many as have married, oh, whether be in this church or outside this church, whether among the relatives of your people, among your... I ask, oh Lord, 
your word says children are your heritage lord i pray you have done it before i have seen it i ask that from the throne of grace and mercy lord release children upon your people in the name of jesus christ thank you everlasting father for as many of your people that are doing business oh lord your word says whatsoever we lay our hands upon we shall prosper i command the prosperity of the lord to come upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ every power that is working against your prosperity every power that is saying you will not eat the fruit of your labor every power that is saying you will work and you will not see reward tonight i cancel that power working in your life in jesus name i say it is well with you it is well with you it is well with new Dawn baptist church it is well with our pastor it is well with our diggings it is well with our youth it is well with our children it is well with our mothers it is well all over in the name of jesus it is well 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 for our brothers that our sisters that are looking for good job receive good job in jesus name Thank you, everlasting Father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for the opportunity to seek your face. Thank you for the opportunity to ask of you. Thank you for the opportunity to know. Lord, according to your promise, let there be answer. Let there be answer. Let there be answer. Let there be answer. Surprise your people. Make them happy. Let them be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. By the reason of this three days program, Lord, let there be great testimonies in Jesus' name. Thank you, eternal King of glory. We worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. I am delivered by His blood. Yes, Lord. Once I was found by the chain of Satan. I am delivered. Praise the Lord. I see the yoke broken in the name of Jesus. Every yoke of darkness, every yoke of delay, every yoke of frustration, they are broken in the name of Jesus. You are set free from every satanic manipulations in the name of Jesus. Tonight, the Lord will visit you. His power will visit you. His miracle will visit you. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Shall we be seated?